Every year, more than 75 million pineapples are produced in Costa Rica, making this tropical fruit one of the most demanded agricultural products on the planet, with a market worth of $12 billion and still growing. But how is it possible to cultivate, harvest and process millions of juicy and sweet pineapples? To answer that, we must enter one of the most impressive agricultural operations in the world, the pineapple plantations of Costa Rica, considered global leaders in the production and export of this delicious fruit. Before talking about modern plantations, let's travel back in time. The pineapple, or ananas camosus, was born in the jungles of Brazil and Paraguay. Domesticated thousands of years ago by people such as the Tupi Guarani, the first versions were small and fibrous, but already valuable. They provided vitamin C, helped digestion thanks to bromelain, and were even used in rituals as a symbol of abundance. In 1493, Christopher Columbus tasted pineapple in the Caribbean and was amazed. He brought it to Europe, where it quickly became an extravagant luxury. Growing it in greenhouses was so expensive that a single fruit could cost the equivalent of thousands of dollars today. They were even rented out to decorate banquets, more as a symbol of prestige than for eating. With colonization, the pineapple traveled to the Philippines, Africa, and Asia. But its real expansion came in the 19th century, when steamships allowed fresh pineapples to be transported long distances. In the 20th century, Hawaii took the lead. Companies like Dole and Del Monte promoted mass production, and by the 1950s, Hawaii produced 80% of the world's canned pineapple. That leadership, however, shifted in the 1980s toward countries with lower production costs. Today, Indonesia, the Philippines and Costa Rica dominate the market. Costa Rica in particular stands out. Thanks to its volcanic soil, abundant rainfall and stable climate, it produces the famous golden pineapple a sweeter, less acidic and more disease-resistant variety that became a favourite in Europe and the United States. Currently, Costa Rica supplies around 40% of the fresh pineapples consumed in the world. But how does this tropical country manage to grow the best pineapples on Earth? It all begins with the soil, the true origin of the pineapple. But it's not just a matter of planting and waiting. Before a single plant is placed, technicians conduct a thorough diagnosis. Soil samples are taken and analysed in laboratories to measure acidity, available nutrients and texture. The pH must stay within a precise range because unbalanced soil can drastically reduce productivity. The structure of the terrain is also crucial. Pineapple roots are shallow, extending only a few centimetres, so they need loose soil that allows them to breathe and absorb nutrients easily. In places like Costa Rica, volcanic soils are especially valuable. They are rich in minerals that favour growth, but they still require preparation. Tractors with disc ploughs loosen the earth several dozen centimetres deep, breaking up clods and improving aeration. This prevents waterlogging and gives roots an ideal environment. On sloped terrain, laser technology levels the ground, adjusting inclines so that rainwater flows into drains instead of damaging the roots, preventing rot that could destroy the crop in weeks. Then come the raised beds, perfectly aligned mounds about 50 centimetres high and more than a metre wide, separated by furrows that allow drainage and space for workers and machinery. These beds have several functions. They protect against flooding, reduce erosion caused by heavy rain, and create a more controlled environment for each plant's growth. Before planting, the soil is enriched. Tradition meets modern science here. Tons of organic compost, often made from pineapple waste, are incorporated to improve structure and recycle residues from the same crop. On this base, mineral fertilizers provide nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, essential nutrients for growth. More and more farms are also using biofertilizers made from agricultural residues, which reduce chemical use and minimize environmental impact. Next, the soil is covered with mulch plastic, a step that might look artificial but has impressive results. Black films retain heat and moisture, while silver ones act as barriers against pests such as aphids. This system can cover up to 80% of the plantation. The benefits are clear. The soil retains more water, weeds are blocked without herbicides, and the temperature remains stable, allowing growth even in cooler seasons. 
On large farms, deploying millions of square meters of plastic requires specialized machinery, but the result is a more efficient and sustainable agriculture. Water savings, up to 50% less pesticide use, and a balance between mass production and environmental care. With the soil ready, it's time for planting. Pineapples are not grown from seeds, but from crowns, slips, and suckers that sprout from mature plants. Each seedling is carefully selected. It must have the right size and weight and be free of invisible pests like nematodes or stable flies. A single infected plant can contaminate thousands, so inspection is strict. Once approved, the seedlings are transported in refrigerated trucks to the field. There, teams of 40 to 60 workers plant them by hand. The beds are arranged in double rows, with 25 to 30 centimetres between plants and about one metre between beds. Each crown is placed with precision, buried 10 to 15 centimetres deep and slightly tilted for stability, with the soil compacted by hand or with light rollers. A single team can plant up to 10,000 crowns in an eight-hour day under the tropical sun. On large farms, up to five hectares can be planted daily. This precision ensures that each plant receives balanced light and nutrients, promoting uniform growth. Thanks to this level of detail, some farms produce more than 70 million pineapples a year, all meeting the strict quality standards of the international market. During the next eight to 12 months, the pineapple goes through its vegetative phase. The tough, spiky leaves expand to form a rosette nearly a metre wide, with up to 80 leaves. Technicians patrol the fields on foot or in light vehicles, recording data on height, leaf colour and signs of stress such as yellowing or wilting. Drip irrigation is adjusted according to the season. Each plant receives between 4 and 6 litres of water per week. In the dry season, sensors help save up to 40% of water, while in the rainy season, the raised bed drainage prevents root rot. Fertilisation happens in two ways foliar applications on the leaves and granular fertilizers in the soil. Each nutrient plays a key role. Nitrogen accelerates leaf growth, phosphorus strengthens roots, and potassium prepares the plant to produce firm fruit. Monthly soil analyses prevent excess nutrients from contaminating nearby rivers or streams. Pest and disease control is another challenge. The most widely used strategy today is integrated pest management which combines science and nature through pheromone traps, ladybugs that feed on aphids, and artificial intelligence that analyzes climate data to predict outbreaks. Thanks to these measures, crop losses are kept around 3%, far lower than the 20% seen in less controlled farms. Climate is also a decisive factor. The ideal conditions are rainfall between 1,500 and 2,500 millimeters per year. During dry seasons, Reservoirs and emergency irrigation systems are used. During extreme rains, drainage and raised beds protect the crop. Even the wind can be an enemy, bending young plants. So many farms plant eucalyptus or banana trees as wind barriers. When the plant reaches nearly one meter in height, it's time for floral induction. In nature, pineapple blooms are triggered by cool nights or water stress. But in the tropics, farmers use ethylene, a compound that induces synchronized flowering within days. This allows up to 95% of the plants to bloom simultaneously, enabling farmers to plan harvests according to demand. For example, for European markets at Christmas or the United States in summer. After two or three weeks, purple flowers appear at the center of the plant, fusing together to form the pineapple, a fruit that is actually a cluster of hundreds of tiny berries. Over the next few months, these flowers transform into pineapples weighing more than a kilo, with the characteristic sweetness and firmness that define the Costa Rican variety. Technicians monitor sugar levels, adjust nutrients, and control irrigation to maintain quality. Drones fly over the fields, detecting stress or nutrient deficiencies, ensuring uniformity throughout the plantation. Only pineapples that meet the standards of sweetness, acidity, and firmness make it to international markets. After almost two years since planting, the most anticipated moment finally arrives, the harvest. Recognizing perfect ripeness is an art, workers rely on three signs, a yellow base, a still green crown, and a sweet aroma. And here's an important fact. Pineapples do not continue to ripen after being cut. 
If they're harvested too early, they remain acidic. If too late, they spoil. That's why the job must be done with precision. In Costa Rica, most pineapples are harvested by hand to avoid bruising. With curved knives and gloves, workers carefully cut the fruit and place it into padded baskets or conveyor belts. A single worker can cut around 1,000 pineapples per day, and in large plantations, teams can harvest up to 100,000 in a single shift. To protect the fruit, they are placed upside down in containers, using the crown as a natural cushion. From there, trucks quickly transport them to processing plants, where they must arrive within a few hours to maintain maximum freshness. When the pineapples reach the plant, a remarkable transformation begins. The first step is cleaning. They enter large tanks filled with treated water that removes dirt, insects, and any trace from the field. Rotating brushes and pressurized water jets leave them spotless. Then, they move along conveyor belts equipped with sensors that evaluate shape, size, and quality in just seconds. The best pineapples, representing only 30 to 40% of the total, are called premium. Large, well-shaped, and flawless. These are prepared to travel fresh to markets such as the United States or Europe. Before shipping, they receive a coating of natural carnauba wax, which helps preserve moisture and shine. Afterward, they are cooled in chambers at around 10 degrees Celsius, packed in boxes of 12 to 15 units with all the information labeled and finally loaded into refrigerated containers. Thanks to this process, they arrive in just two weeks ready for consumption with a shelf life of up to three additional weeks. But the story doesn't end there. The rest, around 60 to 70%, is transformed into a wide variety of products, making the pineapple far more versatile than most imagine. This is where specialized machinery comes into play. One of the most famous is the Ganaka machine, designed in Hawaii in the 1920s. It peels and cores the pineapple in seconds, processing more than 1,000 fruits per hour. The skin is so tough that the blades must be sharpened every 30 minutes to maintain accuracy. After that, the pulp is manually inspected to discard any spots or unwanted fibers. Once inspected and separated, the pineapple pulp enters the canning line, where each piece begins a completely different journey. First, it's cut into shapes depending on its final destination. Uniform slices about one centimeter thick for classic rings, perfect cubes, of one to two centimeters for salads and desserts, or irregular chunks for industrial recipes. All of this is done with precision machinery that ensures every can contains fruit that is consistent and visually appealing. Each can is filled with about 70% fresh fruit, and the rest is completed with natural juice or a light syrup that helps preserve texture and sweetness. Then, the cans are vacuum sealed to prevent air from entering which keeps the nutrients and flavor intact. The next step is sterilization in autoclaves, massive heat chambers where the cans are cooked at high temperature for a precise time. Here, any potentially harmful bacteria are eliminated, while vitamin C and bromelain remain almost intact. This combination of heat and sealing allows the cans to last for years without losing quality. Finally, the cans go through cooling tunnels with water at controlled temperatures, quickly reducing heat to preserve texture and flavor. Once ready, the boxes are labeled and packed, prepared to travel across the world and end up on pizzas, salads, desserts, or any dish that calls for the sweet tropical flavor of pineapple. Pineapple is also transformed into refreshing juice. First, the pulp is gently pressed to extract all the liquid. Then it passes through filters that remove fibers and residues, leaving only the clear, vibrant juice. To ensure freshness, it is quickly pasteurized, a process that eliminates bacteria without affecting its tropical flavor, and then packed into ready-to-serve Tetra Packs. Part of this juice is concentrated, reducing its volume to make export easier or to store it in deep freezers for long periods without losing aroma or taste. This way, pineapple travels from the tropics to every corner of the world while maintaining its freshness. But pineapple isn't just for drinking, it's also enjoyed as a snack. For this, it's sliced into thin pieces that pass through drying tunnels, where heat removes almost all moisture. The result is a small, sweet bite with an intense flavor, perfect for snacks or creative combinations. 
For those who prefer frozen fruit, the individual quick freezing method is used. Each piece is blanched for a few minutes in steam and then frozen at extremely low temperatures. This technique prevents pieces from sticking together and preserves their texture and colour, ready for smoothies, fruit mixes or simply to enjoy straight from the bag. Pineapple also finds its way into something more homemade and sweet, jam. The process begins with fresh pulp, carefully crushed until smooth. Sugar is added in controlled proportions, typically 50 to 60% of the fruit's weight, along with a touch of natural pectin, the fibre that gives jam its thick, glossy texture. The mixture is transferred to large stainless steel kettles, where it cooks slowly. As the temperature rises to 100 degrees, the water evaporates and sugars concentrate, creating a balance between sweetness and acidity. During cooking, surface foam is removed to ensure a clean, shiny finish. The perfect point is measured in degrees bricks, the scale that indicates sugar concentration. At 65 bricks, the jam has reached its ideal consistency, not too runny, not too solid. At that moment, while still hot, it's poured into sterilised glass jars, vacuum sealed and cooled quickly. This airtight closure not only preserves flavour, but also extends shelf life for months without artificial preservatives. Thus, the pineapple that began as a fresh fruit in the field ends up transformed into a versatile product, ready to spread on bread, pair with cheese or be used in pastries. A different way to enjoy the same fruit with all its tropical aroma concentrated in a single jar. What's most interesting is that almost nothing from the pineapple goes to waste. The peel and core, which make up about 40% of its weight, are used as livestock feed, converted into biogas for energy, or turned into compost to return nutrients to the soil. Moreover, modern technologies such as pulsed electric fields allow for greater juice extraction from the pulp, reducing waste and improving the efficiency of processing plants. And that is how millions of pineapples are produced. Tell me, do you like this fruit? I'll read your answer in the comments. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe. In the windows you'll see next, there are more videos about industrial processes as fascinating as this one. See you next time.